Okay, so we're asking dumb uh, SEO questions uh, each week. Um, we answer the questions uh, asked on the uh, SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, with us tonight, um, we have uh, uh, Daniel Nugraha, um, world's greatest programmer. Um, uh, Masataki Wasa is uh, a webmaster of wasaweb.net and also uh, he is um, a Google top contributor on the AdSense and Google Plus help communities. Richard Hearn is a conversion rate optimization specialist uh, headquartered in both Thailand and uh, um, uh, Ireland. Um, you can find Richard at redcardinal.ie. And um, Tim Kepper uh, is also a conversion rate optimization specialist and uh, proud to call himself an SEO. Um, Tim runs a website in the UK, online ownership. Um, dot com. Okay, uh, um, I just got to find the right screen here. Share my desktop. Right, okay. Sorry about the delay here. I have to figure out a smarter way to do this. Okay. First uh, question tonight uh, is from Marconi Jarantilla, um, who wants what I think is impossible. Uh, we want to have ranking in local results uh, in uh, Google US, uh, Canada, and the UK. Uh, Marconi says, "Hello, guys. I have a website that." Um, serves a touring business in Ireland and we want to have ranking in local results uh, in Google US, Canada and UK but how do you build or create a, a listing and publish citations um, when the country like Ireland doesn't even have a, doesn't have a zip code and even uh, a business directory sites this might uh, really be a dumb question thanks looking forward to your reply Well, I didn't know that. Um, you didn't have postcodes in Ireland, uh, Richard. No, no postcodes. They're bringing them in, but it's fairly controversial what they're bringing in. Okay. Well, I mean, I've just looked at um, Redbook.ie, which is a directory, online directory, um, and I notice. Um, I would say, you know, scrolling through, I would say fifty percent. Of the listings have got postcodes, 50% don't. Uh, and then I also look, you know, I'm taking the ones without the postcodes. Like for example, I've just taken Go Cruise, uh, which um, doesn't have a postcode. I've chucked it into Google Maps, and Google Maps has given it a postcode. So um, look, I'm sure that there's got to be a way of 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 getting a postcode. Um, what you could also do is uh, slightly off the cuff is um, obviously have your address on your site, then go into MapMaker and actually create the business in MapMaker. Wait till it starts appearing in normal Google Maps and then go claim and verify it that way. And that way you have um, you know a local page. Job done. Um, but in terms of Google US, Canada, and UK, um, the the situation there is um, obviously your business is based in Ireland. Um, now, I, I don't, you know, you're not going to be able to rank in 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 Google US or Canada. Um, well, you know, if somebody's searching for um, I, I, you know, island travel, or you know, I mean, you, you haven't given us a an actual URL to look at. But if somebody's searching um, travel company island, you know, that is that, that is conceivable because you actually they 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 wanting to search in Ireland. You're based in Ireland, and you're creating a site which is a, a travel site for Ireland. 
Um, so I don't quite know what you mean wanting to rank in the, in, in US and Canada. Um, you, your 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 Google Map won't ever appear in US and Canada because that's why it's called local business. It's purely because it's obviously localized to to where you are. But if somebody in the US and Canada had to search in maps, whatever the name of your company is, Ireland, you would appear in the maps. So the, the point is, is you know, first sort out your, your local side um, and then perhaps maybe explain a bit better what you mean about you wanting to rank in the US and the UK uh, and, and Canada, sorry. Yeah, agreed. They, they, there's no reason that they should want to rank locally if they don't have a local presence in the countries they're trying to rank in. So uh, the postcode issue, you, you, Ireland has never had postcodes. Up until recently, there was never postcodes, and there's never been an issue with Google and figuring out where things are. So uh, I think that's a bit of a red herring. I don't think that you will need to have a postcode to rank in, in Google. They may well be applying a postcode, but chances are, well, it wouldn't surprise me if it's not correct. So I wouldn't worry about postcodes. Okay. Well, uh, Marconi, yeah, Jaron Tiller, I, I hope um, that's the uh, answer that you're looking for. Now, uh, next question um, tonight uh, is from a good friend of mine, uh, Ian McLeod. Um, he lives up here on the Tweed. Um, and it's about links between his own sites. He said, a few years back when Google, Panda and Penguin uh, hit our network of related websites, um, with everyone panicking and scrambling for answers, um, we decided that passing link juice between websites that we owned could have been affecting our rankings. A decision was taken to use the no follow attribute on all links from our internet interconnected websites. Um, research of other uh, high ranking websites, it appears that the use of no follows is relatively low. Do you have any thoughts on whether we could revert to removing some or all of these nofollow attributes? But more importantly, um, would there be a benefit or not? More than 50% of our links are nofollow. I'll give my opinion on this, and my opinion is it depends. Uh, I think that you could take two similar site networks like this and you could do what you've done to both, i.e. make all the links no follow, and then you could revert them back to follow for both and it may have different consequences for each network. I don't think myself that it's as simple as is a link no follow or not. I think there's an awful lot more goes into figuring out if sites are part of a network and if links should have value. Um, I can just say from my experience, I've seen cases where interlinking sites that are in a network can actually have a very detrimental effect on the sites, especially if they're if they're not authoritative. And that even reverting it back to follow sometimes won't reverse the negative effect, uh, the negative impact you've seen. And then again, you can never really be sure what's causing some of these things because there are so many updates going out and there are so many other things happening that it, it's very hard to know. For me, my personal feeling is uh, no follow should be used for the purpose it was intended, i.e. I don't trust this link. Um, but that said, that doesn't mean that Google sees things the same way. Yep. I'd be careful with anchor text as well, by the way, just to mention. Uh, I think that definitely you can overcook your anchor text when you control it, and that will get you in the crosshairs of things like Penguin, so be very, very careful. Yeah, and another thing is, I mean, I don't specifically know what you mean, like a network of related websites, because um, that could be sort of interpreted in quite a variety of ways. Um, I've got no problem with, for example, a um, hotel brand having their main page uh, and then all their different properties within the brand um, on their footer they've got obviously links to properties within the site. Uh, Google can kind of understand that um, these are all interconnected in that sense um, and related to a business. Uh, 
so that remains, is your network of related websites actually connected to a business or are they not connected to a, a business uh, in that sense? So that's, that, that, that's obviously one thing there. Um, uh, if they are in some way or related to a brand um, and it's very confusing in terms of interconnecting sites these days <laughs> and how Google's going to interpret it. Um, a very uh, one way that you can consider is um, on each site creating um, a page, you know, on our um, whatever you want to call it, our business, our, our brands, etc. Um, and on that page, you could list out how the company works and links, and those would those would actually contain your links, not all the pages within the site. Um, so it would be clearly and understandable if if a if if a Googler ever had to come and check out any of your sites. Uh, this page clearly explains how this business is broken down and how all these different um, websites interconnect with one another. Uh, uh, you know, in a clear in a clear way. Um, and that, that that's another way for you to to look at it if you can structure it I mean that's if they are related in that sense a good question might be also um, why did they set up this network of related sites and um, if it was set up for search they're probably on the wrong track if it was set up because they're separate brands uh, I think that's probably okay um, and a, a nice point just to follow up on what Tim was saying um, I worked a couple of years ago with a with a site that had a, a very large affiliate network and we moved their affiliates from having a, an affiliate link back to the parent site on every page to actually having one page on the site which linked back to the parent and having a site-wide link to that page and we got pretty good results from that so be careful of site-wide stuff sometimes uh, it can work against you. Richard I'm a bit sick um, can you just run that last bit past me again? Just so I mean, I know I can watch the um, hangout again tomorrow, but uh, okay. Uh, I probably didn't describe it very well, so I'll try and describe it again. So I worked with a company who had uh, their own affiliate network. So they had affiliates yep. who were uh, selling their product, and on the affiliate sites, what they had historically was they had a link in the footer on each affiliate site which came back to the the, the company I was working for the 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 product owner and what we did was we changed it so that uh, uh, one of the terms of being an affiliate was that they had a, a page on their website that explained what the product was and who was providing the product and we changed we, we asked the affiliates to change the link that they had in their footer to rather than point to my client site to point to this new affiliate page on their site and that one page linked back to my client and it meant that they yep. had a site link going to a page an internal page on their site and that internal page was seen as being quite important and that internal page linked back to my client and uh, to this day that, that still works quite nicely I can't say that it would work now if you did it now, but certainly I think it will have a lot more power than having a site-wide link. You don't want site-wide links, basically. Yeah. Does that make better sense? Excellent, Ben. It certainly does. Um, I know what to do now. Um, excellent. Um, all right. Um, Ian McLeod, uh, mate, uh, I, I hope um, that you're happy with that response. Um, next item on our agenda um, is question number three from uh, uh, SEO SMO, um, who asked a simple question. Hi guys, um, what's your SEO strategy uh, after uh, Penguin Update three? I'd like to answer, guys, see in the, um, I'd like to answer Jim. The answer is definitely don't build spammy links. <laughs> I, I was I, I read that when I loaded this question. Uh, I saw what Edwin Young great on the on the SEO questions community on Google Plus. Um, so <laughs> I was going to do that, but you beat me. All right, uh, nobody else. 
Well, it looks like you've got your right whack, uh, SEO, I'm, SEO. I'm, um, in seriousness, I think there are there are probably some things to take from this, and that's that if someone is going away and creating links to your site which don't have much value and aren't earned, uh, they're, you're probably going about this the wrong way. And you probably really do need to focus on your content and on your very close business network, i.e. partners, uh, affiliates, etc., to look at how you can get some pretty high-quality links coming back to your site. But it really is actually now, it's it's quality over quantity, more so than it's ever been, because I can I see people who rank for pretty pretty competitive terms with only a handful of links and I would say, I guess that when you go to the top 10 of any sort of competitive term, I'm sure that a good proportion of the sites that are there are actually been penalized in some way or form. So there's opportunity here as well. Yep. All right. Um, moving on from there, are we? Take that as a yes. Um, Pulkit uh, Kurana asks, uh, um, do I need an XML sitemap as well as a, an HTML sitemap? Uh, Pulkit said, hello, everyone. I I'd, I'd, would like to ask, is it necessary to have uh, all blog posted URLs to be shown in the, the XML sitemap as well as in a HTML sitemap? My website doesn't have uh, this, but if it is imperative, then I'll surely implement it. Your suggestions are highly appreciated. Look, it's 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 not, you know, it's not a, the be all and end all. Googlebot would will find your stuff. However, if you have the opportunity of creating an XML sitemap. Uh, which updates itself regularly, you know, uh, either uh, if you create it to update itself when you add a new blog post on, or if you create it to update once every once a week, um, you know, that that's better because uh, you're telling Googlebot this is what's on your site and he can find it straight away. Uh, but if you don't, it's not the be all and end all because Googlebot will find it. Yeah. If it's easy to do, I'd do it. Uh, if it starts taking your time, I wouldn't worry too much. And again, it can also it can also depend on the velocity of your posting. If you're posting an awful lot, it can be usually be helpful to create XML sitemaps because your your site architecture will will bury content. So, uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't fret about it at all. Yep, that sounds fine for me. All right, um, let's move on to the next, uh, which is from Naboja Dujic. Um, should I create a new Google account and submit my new website? Um, he said, each time I start a new website, the same question crosses my mind. Should I create a new Google account and submit my new website to Google Webmaster Tools with that new account? My main uh, Google account is very old. I've had uh, dozens of websites uh, in the last 10 years. Some of them were very successful, but some sites were crushed by pandas, penguins, groundhogs, raccoons, and other animals that Google unleashed upon us. Are my new websites stigmatized as from, from the outset uh, just because uh, I added it uh, to my old Google Webmaster tools? Does Google uh, pay more attention uh, to webmasters who were sinners. Um, is it maybe better to start it all fresh with a new Google account, or am I just parano paranoid? Well, I don't really know how kind of Google works and if they're going to be, you know, if they would be that malicious. But uh, in all honesty, um, no, I don't think you need to create a separate account. Uh, and the reason being is, is you could have a large agency out there uh, which has everyone attached uh, in Webmaster Tools uh, and that large agency might have take on three or four brands which were naughty in the past, um, which might have a penalty against them, 
which they're working through. They might also have another 20 odd clients which are perfect, which is all in the same account. So in that theory being, um, you know, would Google then look at that and that it's all attached to the same account and then say, oh, okay, well, you know, you've got a couple which are penalized, you've got a couple which are nice, well, we're going to look at the other ones now and slap them and all. I really honestly don't believe that would occur. Um, but you know what? It's a paranoid, par very paranoid world we live in. So why not? <laughs> yeah, I'll give a slightly alternate view on that, I think. I think historically it's been seen that Google has targeted spammers and Google has quite definitely known who those spammers were or are and you wouldn't blame Google for using information that is given to them uh, to help with their anti-spam efforts. Um, I'd say that if you've only been affected by sort of algorithmic stuff, I don't think you probably need to worry. But if you're up to no good, that tends to attract uh, manual intervention by Google. Um, I don't think you'd be being paranoid at all. I think that you would be, uh, yeah, doing the right thing, shall I say. Um, it's clear that Google, if they know someone is spamming, if they know you're a spammer and their manual team is after you and you do have a Google Webmaster Tools account, of course they're going to start looking at your sites. If you've got something to hide, uh, yeah, don't submit them to Google via a Webmaster Tools account. You'll see the real spammers, they won't use anything from Google. But as I, I, I think it just depends on what you're doing. And, and if you're really, what I'd say is, here you going, Tim? Yeah, I mean, in recent in in in, in recent sort of uh, kind of updates, it was a very interesting uh, where um, when we had the private blog, uh, private you know uh, link networks, which were which were hit um, in some of the in some of the cases where actually people held up their hands and wrote a blog about it um, and explained what it was. Um, a lot of it was also to do with the who is. So if you're up to no good, um, all your sites should have a completely different who is or a hidden who is. Um, yeah, don't you know? I mean, if you if you're really paranoid, so just make sure that all your who is is totally different or uh, completely hidden, because uh, it it apparently Google is using that now also. So, if we want to go down the paranoid road, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but it, it entirely depends on what you're doing. Like, if you're just doing stuff that's getting hit by Panda and Penguin, I don't think that Google really considers those people to be spammers. I think they they will probably view them as people who are manipulating things poorly. Uh, I think spammers are people who are really spamming Google. Like, they're the type of people we probably don't see too much of, and we probably don't talk much about. Um, but like I think spam to Google is stuff that's really really malicious and like I say people who are just creating some dodgy links or maybe their content is a little bit thin but not spam not pure spam they're different I don't think you need to worry if that's what you've been caught by but if you've been doing stuff that is really spammy uh, yeah well then you probably should be paranoid yep yeah, I, I just point out to um Navasia, that um, normally um, questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google Plus attract a number of answers, but in this case, uh, nobody was going to answer apparently. Um, and also, also, I mean, just because we're paranoid, and I'm paranoid too, mate, it doesn't mean that everybody's not out to get us. You know, only the only the uh, paranoid survive. Anyway, um, and our next um, question coming up um, is for another one from uh, Nabosha Dushik. Um, Nabosha says, hi guys, three weeks ago I started to add images to my new website. Now there are over 200 images submitted to Google Webmaster Tools through a sitemap, but naught images are indexed. All submitted pages uh, are indexed. Um, I'm using the Yoast uh, WordPress SEO sitemap. Setup is the same as with my other websites, but where images are indexed normally. 
what could be the reason for Google to crawl the website regularly but not to index the images? I'd say he should probably go to, to image search and just make sure are none of his images indexed. It could be something like the file name changes or it may be that the file name that's been output by Yoast plugin has been redirected somewhere or something like that. So it's reporting that the 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 URIs that you're you're submitting are not indexed, but actually your images may be. I, I, it sounds a bit strange. Or it could also be that he's robbing his images from somewhere else. Yes. So is a duplicate of some some something else that they, they won't want them at all, will they? Uh, potentially. I'm not quite sure. They they, they tend to, to index duplicate stuff, but um, it could be that they're that is they're looking at his image and seeing that they're they're no good. I mean, it'd be interesting to look at this, but um, he says each image name and alt tags are optimized and unique. Not sure if three weeks is enough time for Google to start in. Yeah, well, again, three weeks maybe. Like he only mentions three weeks there, so again, it may be just a reporting issue. Maybe the the image index doesn't report as freshly as as the web. Yeah, and of course, if uh, Nabozha uh, doesn't um, want want to put his details in uh, Webmaster Tools, he certainly shouldn't put his URL uh, <laughs> on our community. Uh. Okay, Navajo, I hope um, that's the answer that you were looking for. Um, next, um, we have a question uh, from Aaron Bowman. Um, I'm not sure how he came to mention Tessa Bernacki. I remember she did ask a question um, last week or the week before. But anyway, he said, uh, hi, friends, same, in need of some guidance. It's the same question. I don't understand it. Okay, so it's it's a it's a question that Tessa asked, and he's added it again. Is that is that what you mean? Ah, uh, no, that's it's it's he's quoted her question to him. That's what it is. Oh right, 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 right. So there's probably more down underneath the fold. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll look. I'll read it out. Uh, he he said, uh, in need of some guidance, I'm looking to outsource link removal for my site. It is too time consuming to do, and we have around 8,000 links. Um, we did not receive a manual penalty, but were hit by Penguin. Um, do you have uh, any uh, recommendations on which service is legitimate and will take care of the whole process? He said, I have disavowed a whole lot of spammy links from a client site that got hit by Penguin. I'm in the middle of some intensive link building, ethical, of course and have added some more content to the site. Does anybody else have any ideas on ways to resuscitate a site um, that was hit by Penguin 3? Many thanks. I doubt that the, the prescription for this has changed at all. I'd say it's, it's the same as it was for Penguin 1, Penguin 2, um, but he's going to have to wait for Penguin 4, unfortunately, in order to get to resuscitate a site from Penguin 3. Um, and and Penguin, I don't like to go on about Penguin, but if Penguin 3 was, wasn't really an update at all and it was purely a refresh, you can sort of, well, you have to assume that if they do release a new Penguin, it will have to be something new and not just the old stuff regurgitated. It's, uh, I suspect this has turned into a real mess for them at this stage. I think you're right. Um, I think but he just, he just needs to keep adding. Just, just. I mean, he mentioned some of the other things. Certainly, if there's links going to inner pages, uh, he can 404 the pages. I mean, that's one way to get rid of some of those links. Um, you know, it may be difficult to actually remove some of the stuff. If he can remove it, if he can use disavow, uh, if he can change content on pages, um, and of course, then there's the nuclear option of of starting again, depending on what the site is and whether the brand is all important or whether they can migrate their brand to a different a different domain. Um, you know, I think that the nuclear option actually probably was never that nuclear. If, if some of the people had started off in 2012 just with a new domain and put the same effort into the new domain as they put into trying to resuscitate a hit domain, they'd probably be doing very, very nicely now. 
you know, I, I, I'm fairly sure I remember that you, Richard, were, the, were, were a great proponent of that, that solution. I, I, I'm, I'm fairly sure you ex actually was um, uh, on the Google Webmaster Forum, I think. Um, I, I'm sure I remember you speaking on that. No, I, I asked John about that after the first Penguin. And it was me who asked him, and he thought that it would be a, there might be some edge cases where that would be correct, um, and I, it will be interesting to sort of revisit that, not not from the point of view of of showing John up or trying to put him on the spot, but I'd say that he knows a lot more about it now that maybe uh, would change his opinion on whether migrating to a new domain would have been a good idea back in 2012. Like bear in mind, we're coming up to nearly three years of Penguin. And there are still sites that are hit by Penguin One. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, Aaron Bowman, I, I hope um, that's um, the answer that you were looking for. Um, this is a question from Gabriel Keynes on on uh, hidden divs. He said, hi, I have a concept for a site where several divs would show intro paragraphs and when a user clicks a more button, the div expands in size and shows more verbose content. I can accomplish this action using CSS and JavaScript by various methods of hiding the divs containing the expanded text, but I am concerned that any uh, hiding of text, um, whether by positioning off screen or behind something or set to display none, um, will have adverse effects on my SEO. In such a scenario, would my hidden text be searched? Would I be penalized for such a strategy? I found a, a mountain of, of forum posts that, that say I would from 2009 or so. And, and most seem to relate to using hidden divs for nefarious reasons. I, I want to use them to selectively show a, a lot of content in a small screen area. Thanks for reading all that. Thanks, gratefully received, uh, Gabriel Keynes. It's funny that, I that think some people think it's not an issue. Um, if you listen to what, what Google says about this and what they've said over the years, you'll hear that quite a while ago they moved to uh, a full rendering of pages so they don't just go and in just call your HTML and just see what what's what text is on the page that they seem to be rendering they render a page so they can see what is visible to the user and I'm quite sure that they've said a couple of times that they try to use what is visible to the user so if you search for something and it is in a hidden div on a page that page probably won't rank as highly as a page where it is visible, all other things been equal. So uh, it probably won't won't hurt his SEO, but you should bear in mind that if there is content which people might be searching for that is in the hidden area of the div, he may not rank so well as other sites would. Yep. Anybody else? Okay. Gabriel, I, I, I hope um, that's um, the answer that you're looking for. This is a question from um, Sarab Tawari. Uh, how important is anchor text to a backlink? Well. <laughs> Where do you start, eh? Yeah. <sighs> it's, really, it's massively important from both a positive and a negative angle. I mean, it's yeah. it's actually anchor text that's been probably the trigger to things like Penguin. So, or at least one of the chief triggers within Penguin. So, it's important to say that it's it's critically important from both a positive and a negative perspective. I think you've got to be very, very careful with anchor text these days. And that said, by the way, I would say that the backlinks that don't have anchor text are more important now than they were a couple of years ago. 
as in just a, a backlink that may be just the URL text or it may be the brand name. Um, I'd say that uh, those those links are actually more important than they were a few years back. You could probably do a whole hangout okay. on this on this topic, Jim. <laughs> yes, it did, uh, as you say, though it's yeah. it's, it's a, a a question of where to start. Hmm. I see. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm I'm currently putting well, I'm currently working on a just an article on how to, especially because we get so many questions now about well you know, my SEO company built these links and how do I know which is good and which is bad. So basically I'm just doing a thing on what's good and bad and then it's going to include some anchor text. So, um, but it's so, <laughs> it's so, uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's just so many, so many ways to look at it. Um, I think in terms of, uh, you know, what he's asking in that sense, yes, it is important, but I would try and keep it as natural as possible as a user would use it. They wouldn't say that, uh, they, they wouldn't say click here to look at pink fluffy elephants. They would say click here or they would say click here dub 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 or uh, check out pink fluffy elephants site or y y do you see what I mean? I think you know, from from an average person's perspective, try and keep it as natural as possible as a user would naturally share that link. If that makes sense. I think you could also I see say Mark Efficient Kirstner has joined us. Hey? Was he was he about to say something? Were you about to say something, Micah? Oh, I always could. Uh, <laughs> um, look, uh, anchor text—it's it's still important. There's, um, you know, relatively it all kind of may vary depending on on uh, your view of how many additional factors they've added into the algorithm. Um, and the the point with penguin being, you know. The, the less use of very specific anchor text, uh, kind of commercial based, is uh, you know something that they're looking at. They're looking for a more diverse set. Um, so kind of getting something that's going to be very specific uh, to what you want to rank on the whole time is going to be seen as a flag. Um, but the importance of an anchor text is still going to be there. It's still part of the algorithm. It's still uh, a signal to the relevance of why you're ranking. It's just uh, you can't overdo it um, in comparison. Whatever you know. Whereas before you could get 100% of the exact phrase and you're you're good. Now, uh, I'll just, yeah, let's just say something like 70%. If you go above 70, you're getting dinged. Um, so <clears throat> it's still important. You just can't. Um, go to the levels of the extent of where things used to be. Um, and Google's doing that because, yeah, they, they, want, they, don't, they don't believe uh, most people are using uh, exact commercial anchor text. They believe most, whatever they define as natural, is something more either branded, um, kind of a mixture of use of brand with anchor text, or um, the use of non-anchor text. Or, you know, other areas. And, yeah, and so that's kind of like what uh, I believe in what I've seen, at least with that. I'll mention one more thing, Jim, just to mention that, that what's good for the goose isn't always good for the gander, that uh, some sites can get away with a lot more than others. So it, it also depends on who you are in the world. Uh, if you're an authority, you can get away with a lot more. If you're not an authority, uh, you can get away with a lot less. Well, I, I, I would kind of qualify that as um, yes, but it's more of you have a lot more authority to lose. So, 
the smaller you are, uh, the, you know, the less trust you have. The larger you are, the, the more trust. So you can still get hurt, dinged by something like this. Um, but if, you're, if you've already established a large authority base, you just have to you have to burn a lot more credit before you uh, get dinged. Mm. Sorry, I just wanted to say that because sometimes that might, I felt that might be interpreted as like, oh, they give preference to brand. It's like, not exactly what I think it really is. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, um, I think we've covered this um, for Sora. Um, let's move on to the next. It's right. We'll, we'll be home uh, long before the cows come home. Um, our good friend um, and a new moderator on our community, the SEO Questions community on Google+, Plus, Ratimi Oromaloy asks, uh, what do you all feel about linking from an old blog post to a new one? I would imagine that since the natural order is new post links to older post, it would therefore be considered as attempting to manipulate search engines. Um, but I haven't found any articles on it. Um, has anyone done tests on this? Thanks. Forget forget about search engines. Think about if you go to an old post and there's a newer version of this post, would you not want to be told that there's a newer version with a link to the newer version of the post? And the answer is, of course you would. So why could it possibly be bad to put a link to a newer post in an older one? Yeah, exactly. Anybody else? Well, Ratimi, that's that's it for, for tonight. Um, I hope um, that's what you're looking for. Here's a question from uh, Swati Badanaya, um, and he asks, um, "What do I have to do to get uh, organic rank uh, in search engines?" Um, he said, hi all, I need your support. Can you please check both of my sites uh, um, on, the, on, the, on the basis of SEO? I'm not sure what he means by that, but or, 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 orangemantra.com.au um, and wordpressdesign.co.in. Um, please let me know uh, what I have to do to get organic rank. Uh, because I'm doing SEO for both sites for the uh, past uh, three months um, and I still don't get um, good ra ranking. Now, he, uh, I, I asked him on the community uh, what uh, he'd done for the past uh, three months. He said, um, first of all, I did on-page SEO for both sites and then uh, after that I did off-page SEO like article submission, social bookmarking, press release submission, content sharing submission, a little bit of social media, and uh, web uh, two submissions. Um, and you, he said you should know that uh, there is no uh, crawling errors uh, on webmaster tools of both sites. And he also thinks his content is unique and genuine. Please help. Oh boy! All right. Um, so, yeah, um, you've kind of checkmarked all the boxes of what you shouldn't really do with um, backlinking and and uh, um, yeah, article submission, no, no, social bookmarking, no, press releases, submissions, no. Um, Content sharing, okay, maybe it depends on. Probably no, but I don't know what that one is. Um, social media, well, okay, social bookmarking more or less, and web 2.0 submission. Um, <clears throat> you're looking at the wrong areas. Um, these are things that, yeah, maybe early 2000, uh, eh, mid 2000s, you could have, you know, gotten something out of. But uh, these days, most of say social media sites are no followed. Most of the press releases don't have value. Article submissions were dinged like 
crazy by Google back in the day. These are kind of some of the potential um, penguin fodder as well. Um, so at least when it comes to the ones that you are working on with kind of the backlink errors, that's the wrong type of off page, but you know the off page SEO. Um, <clears throat> so that kind of means. Um, so what does that leave you? Well, um, you know you're, you're going to be looking at much more natural ways of getting backlinks. Are people what's making your content unique and in, it's not just rather I should say it's not just unique, but what makes it valuable? What makes it enticeable for people to go and share it naturally on their own to their blog? or um, valuable websites that are going to talk about you or major news sites that are going to talk and, and essentially link to you about. Um, those are going to be things that are going to be of, of higher value and things that Google is going to value to, to, to rank. Um, the ones that you've mentioned on the off-page site, Google's pretty much clamped down on a lot of those to not uh, um, value or the sites themselves um, no follow all their links and so that those values are not going to be there for you. Um, so I'm just going to target that on the off, right. off page side and let others steal the site. Okay, so okay, so right, I'm just I mean I haven't I haven't sort of opened all of them, but <laughs> I've opened up your orange, um, your orange mantra one. Okay. <sighs> right. Uh, firstly, I think you know, and don't take us the wrong way. I think you've really laid this out just completely in the wrong way. Okay. This orange mantra. Um, and judging by your your front your, your your homepage title is web development. You're a web development company, or you offer web development on both WordPress and Magento. Okay. Now, firstly, if I open this page, I have no idea what this is about. Absolutely no idea. Okay. Yes, you've got obviously in the in in your top line nav. So you've sort of web development, WordPress, Magento, social. Uh, wh what? I need an introductory text. I want to know who this company is. I need to know what you do. Now, the way you've laid out those blocks, social engine, Magento store, that to me looks like a blog. But actually, it's you know uh, uh, service pages. Um, Okay, so yeah, right, um, but they're, they're service pages. So that you you need to actually get a proper structure here. You need to have a home page where people land. Uh, you need to have an intro to the company and what you do, right? Then you need to structure it. You need to have your services. You can possibly break it down into two different things: sort of web development and what you, you know, and then have a, a landing page for that. You could break that down into um, platforms and then, you know, in, in that platform page you explain about, you know, that your experience with WordPress Magento, see our WordPress uh, work or, you know, a WordPress service. Magenta. You need to lay it properly out, like a proper business. This is, it just looks like a blog page, okay? Now, I mean, don't take this, you know, the wrong way or anything, but, I mean, what are you honestly playing at here with Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane, Sydney, and Perth? You have no offices in there. You're not providing an address. You're not providing a phone number. Um, you know, really? If somebody found your site and they wanted to check this out, um, yeah, fine. You've got the request a free quote, but um, you know, on your on your actual page, if somebody says, "Oh yeah, you know, Melbourne," I'm going to click on there. Uh, let me click on that. Um, but I've got no contact numbers, right? Um, your Magento Developer Melbourne Australia page. 
is you know all of these services pages are exceptionally similar <laughs> you know you need if, if you want to be taken as a legitimate company don't try and bullshit the search engine structure yourself properly that a user can understand that they can see what services you're providing what platforms you can build in you know, um, I, I, I don't know what Zend is. That's that's skipped me by in my Zend. Okay, so then also, uh, so it's a it's a framework. So obviously, you know, um, lay it out properly, plan your site out properly, so that a user can understand what he needs. If a if the local guy down the road, the the, the little florist down the road, says, right, I need to build, I need someone to build me a website. Uh, um, so therefore, I need a web developer. And she searches web developer, and she lands on your page. Do you honestly believe, with the way you have laid it out to a lay person, that they would understand where they need to go into that site to see what they need, to understand it, and actually click through, request a code, or pick up the phone to phone you, which they can't do? Um, hang on. I haven't checked your contact us page, so I could be rambling on. And no, you don't have an address in there. Uh, so yes, please, you know, you need to kind of relay and rework this whole site out um, before you start thinking about, oh, how am I going to build links and blah blah blah. Forget about it. Redesign this for the for, for a person that wants who needs web development or who has an idea about web development and thinks, oh, build me a WordPress site, okay? So that when they land on it, they, it's clear to understand, easy to read, uh, and they can then make a decision based on the information you've given whether they would like to contact you or request a free quote. But unfortunately, the way your site is laid out is terrible. If you lay it out as a proper business site, um, you will probably find that your rankings and your search rankings will actually improve rapidly and tremendously. But I must say, Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane, Sydney, Perth, please relook at something because that is not happening for you. Uh, and for the rest of the site, redevelop it and perhaps just come out right. We actually aren't based in Australia, but you know, we, we, we can work with you. Explain it. Don't try and con it. Explain it. You know, we work, uh, we work offshore. Uh, we will work with you, etc. You know, uh, possibly give a couple of testimonials image, uh, and links to the sites. These are the sites we have built. We can do it. Uh, it's easy to, you, you see what I mean? Just create this as a proper business. Rant over, I'm sorry. Good one, Tim. Good. Um, Swati Baranania. Um, Tim's invoice for 2750, including GST, VAT, and state taxes, is on its way. Um, Swati, um, I hope um, you get a, a, a something out of that. Um, our, our next uh, question uh, is um, from Hector Dixit. Um, should I create a page title and meta description for every page? Now, guys, you know that we answer any and all questions asked on the SEO questions community. Um, and um, Hector asks, says, I need your help. I have an e-commerce website with 100 plus pages. Can anyone suggest to me how to optimize these product pages websites according to Google's guidelines? Should I create a page title and meta description for every page or use any other process? Um, please give your suggestion. Um, actually, the answer is yes and no. Um, yes, uh, create the page title and meta description. No, um, please give um, your uh, or use any other process. Oh, my God. Um, Guys, Tim, I suppose you're all puffed out after that inspirational rant. No, no, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm freaking on the on a roll here. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've got an e-commerce website with 100 pages. 
No, it's just nothing unique. Um, did you actually mean I've got an e-commerce website with 100 products? Okay, right. Um, how have you how have you developed this um, e-commerce site? Obviously, I I, I don't uh, I can't see it, so I don't know. Um, do you have landing pages for particular for particular categories um, of this? You know where you have sections within there. Um, so category pages. If you have a category page, um, let's say for example uh, you're selling <sighs> coffee cups. Now, um, if you've got your uh, a coffee cup landing page where you provide a selection of coffee cups as products, you know, a typical e-commerce site. Your category page should be uh, be an introduction to you know you as a company and your coffee cups. Hi, you know, uh, welcome to the great coffee cup company. Um, you know, uh, view a selection of our coffee cups below, ranging from da 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 da, da ceramic, glazed, double glazed. Um, if you can't find what you're looking for in the below products, uh, feel free to contact us or please contact us. Then you have your actual products. The person clicks the first coffee cup they see. It opens up into a coffee cup product page. That product page should have a unique title and a new, unique description. Um, you can, as someone had mentioned also, you can also mark up your um, your product using schema, but invariably, and, 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 I, and I want to say this time and again to people with e-commerce sites, that product page, if somebody lands on that product page, now whether you make the, if you make that product yourself, this is going to be pretty easy for you because if you make it yourself, you will be able to um, describe that product with the love and the care and the attention that you put into it and the effort and the creation and that will come across. Ultimately a lot of people will have an e-commerce site where they'll just take, they'll be selling someone's product uh, that obviously you've purchased um, to, you know, at wholesale and then, and, and then re resell it on. And all too often people will take the same description that the actual manufacturer provides you possibly even the same actual image and just slap it on their site. Now that is a no-no. If somebody had to land on your page, does that description on your page, and I mean your product description, I'm not talking about your meta description, does that product description on that page sell that product? Right, that is your one shot that someone landing on their product page, that is your one shot to sell that product to them, okay? If you just say, this is a green coffee cup, well, that is not going to sell it. You need to explain, look, it's a green coffee cup, it's double glazed, it's, you know, got a beautiful handle, ergonomic, um, I've never spilt a cup of coffee out of this coffee cup purely because of the stylistic <laughs> Do you see what I mean? You need to sell that coffee cup. Um, so create a unique, compelling uh, description. One, if somebody starts comparing prices on these coffee cups and they are all basically priced the same, let's say oh, for argument's sake, they are all cost a dollar and they pull up this site, that site, A, a B, C and D and they look at that one green coffee cup, they look at that one green coffee cup, they look at yours one going, this is the best damn green coffee cup you will ever buy in your life, it only costs a, a, a dollar, it is ergonomically designed to blah 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 blah, you will more than likely make that sell over that other guy, okay? So I'm going to say this again, create unique, compelling, you know, websites, just because you have a page doesn't mean it's something magical that if somebody lands on your site, they will buy. You need to sell it. That is your one shot to sell to that person that product. So, you know, think about it, describe it, and sell it. And yes, uh, getting back to the same thing, unique title, unique meta description, and equally brilliantly unique product description. Rant over.
Fantastic, Tim. Uh, I, I, n I noticed that you, you, you um, didn't have any pink fluffy elephants. Uh, have you all sold out of those? No, pink fluffy elephants, mate. That was for the previous. The, you know, I didn't want to get. I didn't want to get viewers confused. We got to keep to pink fluffies, and we got to keep to green coffee cups. <laughs> we need to customize it. Just swing on over to our side. <laughs> As I said, unique titles, unique <laughs> descriptions. Look, here's a, a question from uh, Stephen Sicantelli. I don't know. I hope you guys will give Stephen some guidance. Um, um, Stephen's history is that he came to uh, um, the SEO Questions community uh, about a year ago, um, and um, one of our members uh, actually set his site up for him and, and refused to take payment. Um, and um, uh, as a consequence, uh, Abraxi taxis, uh, um, which are in Florida, now rank um, in, in uh, um, the top three for um, uh, the, their relevant keywords. Um, now, uh, Stephen has bought um, um, a competing business, um, and he's thinking of buying a, um, um, a, a GoDaddy domain to compete with his site. Um, I hope that you guys uh, lead him to the path of uh, true enlightenment. Are these separate businesses? Same, uh, two, tax uh, two taxi companies. But are they going to be standalone? Are they going to stay as standalone businesses or does he, is he going to amalgamate them into one business? That, that's, that's, uh, he's going to amalgamate them into one business. Um, but he was thinking of um, having two websites, one for each business. Are they going to be um, focused in different areas? Hmm. So I, look, one I hope like higher end, one lower yeah. end. Yeah, is there yeah, a I, stylistic? I, I, it's probably the good question that? to ask him: is 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 he doing this for because he has standalone businesses that have two customer bases, or is he doing this to try and? get two listings in a search result. I mean, I know he says he's not doing this for Google, but uh, the fact that he's asking here would sort of indicate to me that he's thinking about Google. Um, no, I don't think that's fair. I think, obviously he's thinking about it, but I don't, uh, you know, there, the concern of how, I think there's oftentimes a concern of, am I doing something offline that normally I would do, but online can I do the same thing? I think... Mm. You know, I think there's, there's a lot of concern on things like that. Uh, so I don't think one should ever, yeah, discount that. <laughs> I think if they're standalone, he can keep them. It's perfectly valid to have sort of two standalone businesses. But if, if if he's essentially looking to get the same business ranked on two sites, um, there's nothing wrong with that. But I wouldn't I wouldn't advise. It. That's what I would say. And I, I, I certainly, from his opening question, he mentioned about uh, submitting a site to local directories, and I probably wouldn't go down that path either. Uh, if he was going to redirect the new site into his old site, um, I'd probably redirect all the inner pages on the old site to the home page and just put a link in the home page saying we've moved. Actually, the, the um, other business doesn't even have a website. Um, it, oh, well. going to create... Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been reading Dan. So so basically, he's just bought his mate's company who might have had I don't know what two cars or something. Just for example, the site act the the, the other business wasn't like online uh, as such. It didn't have a local G plus page or anything. So. Oh, well, then, yeah, if I it sounds like it's a separate company, you're going to keep it separate, I'd build a new website for the separate company. It, it doesn't matter who owns it. It's, it sounds like it's a separate company from that. Yeah. And as long as they don't have the same phone number, same address, he's okay. But I think, did he mention that it was going to be the same phone number? Yes, he did. Yeah, that could see, be that's a the thing. Problematic. He'd probably be better off getting a separate phone number. If I was him, for the for the for the cost of getting in a second phone line, uh, I think it'd be well worth it. Yeah, and then at least try to make sure there's some type of differentiation between the two businesses. 
Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna separate the two and run the two, then obviously you know and 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 do the two 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 websites, two separate phone lines. Um, but if you're planning on amalgamating them all, that business comes to your business. Their old customers start phoning your phone number. Will then have one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, I think that, that that's um, good advice. Well, my view would be not 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 to try. I mean, Stevens managed to um, um, corner the market um, for one business. It'd be silly to jeopardise that. That's that's my view anyway. Um, let's move on um, to the next one. Uh, and it's from Promoz SEO on copying uh, and publishing reviews. They said, hello everyone, we need your help. We want to show our Training Institute's reviews on our website. We've got a, a couple of reviews on our Google Plus page, Facebook page, and also uh, received a few uh, recommendations via our personal email. Um, is it okay, and according to Google's guidelines, if we show our Google Plus and Facebook page reviews on our website as images, screenshot, um, or as normal text. And if normal text, uh, copy and paste, is okay, won't that be a duplicate content issue? We've seen a, a couple of websites doing this, and they are using structured data to mark up their reviews with schema. So do you think it is, it is ethic, ethical, and can we do the same on our website? Uh, looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Ethical, of course. Of course, it's <coughs> ethical. Whether it's a good thing for SEO is a different thing altogether. Um, I know one way you can do it. By the way, if you're if you're really worried about dupe content, you can put your reviews into an iframe and no index the content in the iframe or robots.txt out, and that way Google will never see it. So I would say uh, image-wise, that's fine if you wanted to use an image. There's no awesome. problem with that. Normal text. The one thing I would kind of say is, is um, it, it, sometimes it's not really, yeah, it might be duplicate, but the real issue is, is the whole page duplicate. Are you providing a value add with everything together? Are you providing a better um, structure through the um, reviews that you now have on, on site from elsewhere? Um, I, I don't think that just you know copying a few couple lines of text from another site and placing it on your pages is going to be harmful. Um, if that's the only thing, uh, or it's you know the majority of it, then that's a problem. But I don't I don't believe that uh, highlighting some of that stuff is uh, an issue as long as you've got a, other value adds uh, for those same pages. Yeah, I mean essentially it's not going to be a duplicate as such because if you're taking Facebook reviews and other business reviews from from all the other places that do reviews out there and a couple of Google Plus reviews and you all amalgamate them into one um, you know essentially you're not going to be duplicating because yes you will have copied snippets from this site, that site, that site so what Mike said you're actually adding to it um, and yes you are extracting and obviously you're going to have links back to um, that w you know where people can actually find them as such, um, so it's not going to be a duplicate issue anyway. And if it became a duplicate issue, that that would be Panda, and Panda just filters us out anyway. So it's not going to be like a penalty in that sense. Um, but talking about Google Plus reviews, you can actually embed the reviews. You can just copy and embed the reviews. Um, so. You know, think about that. If you wanted to create a uh, load, loads of businesses are embedding reviews uh, from their site, and of course, it's all linking back to there. And it's you know, if you're linked with Rel Publisher, you know, it is essentially your own content, and it's an extension of your own site anyway. So, no problem all. Excellent. Anybody else? Okay, Promos uh, SEO, uh, I hope uh, that was what you were looking for. Um, 
I think that, um, well, we have. We're, we've um, answered uh, all of the questions asked uh, this week on uh, the SEA questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, we had a lower number than, uh, yes, uh, Richard, we're, we're, that was the last one done. We now uh, move on to the uh, um, SEO uh, News Weekly Roundup. And this week we have almost as many uh, um, uh, news items to cover th as we did, did questions. Um, and, um, yes, yeah, so e each week um, uh, Mr. Edwin Yonk and others uh, um, pick up um, items of new interest uh, uh, in um, um, in and around the web and put them on the SEO news community on Google Plus and uh, once a week we talk about them. Um, I see Edwin Yonk has found uh, an article from our very own Tim Kappa and, and uh, I have to apologize Tim, I'm very remiss, I haven't read it myself yet but I'm sure you can tell us about it. That's all right. It's not a lot to read, Jim. It's just uh, it's just a few images, really. <laughs> um, yeah. No. In in your local lo local Google in your Google Plus local pages in your dashboard now in your insights, um, they're providing a heat map uh, based upon where people um, searched for directions from your local listing. Um, which is very interesting because, uh, uh, well, how many people actually clicked through to your local page and requested directions? Um, now, this would probably more than likely be from mobile because I doubt, I mean, there could have been some people in a coffee shop, but more than likely 90% of it would be from mobile. Um, and you can actually, I mean, there's quite a few ways you could look at it, you know. You could see if there's a particular area that you know you could use it for actual offline marketing itself. If there's a particular area, um, if you've got for some reason a heat map popping up on a particular road or corner or area, um, you could physically go out and see if there's a bit of a problem with your directions. Um, you know, I think over time this has only been running for like sort of less than thirty. Well. 15 days, over time this will really be be quite insightful. Uh, at the minute it is, but of course also uh, it's not great where I've looked at one of my clients who's based in London and they had quite a few requests but of course no heat map was showing up and that's purely because obviously it was spread over a wide period uh, or a wide area and they couldn't quite pinpoint. But I think over time it should start pulling things in. So yeah, very cool. The call tracking is next to useless at the minute um, until they build build up on that and I think over time builds up on that. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's a really cool, really, really cool thing for a local business um, to see where people are actually or why they need to check directions from your local page rather than on your site. Um, so it's very interesting and there's always you can tie two things in together. Cool tool. Excellent. Anybody else? Thank you for that Tim. Um, another one from Edwin Yonk, uh, Google updates its soft 404 algorithm. Um, besides a standard message file not found and redirecting to the home page, thin content uh, can also be classified uh, as a soft um, 404. Anybody uh, have a closer look at this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read. Um, I read it. It was, uh, um, you know, good stuff. Um, basically, round about the 28th of October. Um, Dijon SEO uh, and and uh, Dan Petrovic they they were looking through webmaster tools and they noticed a spike in soft SEO fours on a particular site or it might have been quite a few sites. Um, and what what it seems to be is thin content pages uh, have been kind of marked as uh, soft four hundred fours in webmaster tools. Uh, I I went and uh, dug in a few of my webmaster tools and I found one or two. 
around about that period on the 28th, 29th, 30th. Um, one for me was actually, which was really handy because I picked it up, was the actual 404 page was not a 404, it was returning a 200. And so therefore technically it's a, let's say a thin content page because all it is is an image saying, oops, you found the wrong page. So totally thin content uh, and it was returning them as soft 404s. So, so yeah, you know, this is, keep an eye on that. Yeah, I don't think this is new. I mean, I think I've seen this for a while. I think the odd part is it, them showing that it's a, that it's a no-index page, and they're noting it's uh, a, an issue there. That's the weirder part. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't. I I think I've seen this like for a while now, like for a few years. So I'm not sure. Um, well, there was certainly the spike with these thin content pages. Yeah. No, I, I think. The, Spike no doubt lower. about it. Yeah, the spike definitely. And it, I mean, they did update the section. I mean, they've got the non-informative titles and all that stuff. So it's I don't discount that. But I think they've been classifying these, and maybe they just uh, they've really ramped up. Or the spike is because they're accidentally throwing in the no-index pages into this. There might be a bug. So it just doesn't something about that doesn't seem correct to be complaining about something that you're telling people not to go into anyway, or not to index. Well, yeah, especially in the index section, because it's not in the crawl section. So, okay. Uh, All right. Um, let, let's, oh, I see Alistair Lattimore has joined us. Uh, how are you, mate? Not bad, everyone. Not bad. And uh, you're um, either... Um, haven't shaved for three weeks, or uh, it's November again. It's November, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go uh, again. <laughs> Except this time, um, instead of trying to be the angry love child of Ron Burgundy, which was really never going to work for me, um, <laughs> This time I've decided to pursue Chopper Reed. Because, well, <laughs> Ooh. Now, you don't know who Chopper Reed is? Good. Well, actually, that makes sense. Chopper yeah, Reed. You might. Sorry, well, if it's they... outside the US, it, you know, we don't care about those things. <laughs> uh, let me just find the appropriate the query for mean, you. Mean hardcore. Australian biker dude. He was a um, a hitman here in Australia, amongst other things. Um, but he's renowned for having a body full of pretty ordinary looking tattoos that he got while he was in prison, um, and a completely badass mustache. Yeah, we call that the handlebar mustache yes. here in the US. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. Oh, called that here too. Okay. Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> so I'm, um, uh, it, it's coming along nicely. I just haven't shaved for the last two days. So tomorrow morning I'll uh, re can start, can start sculpting. Yes. <laughs> As it were. That, that's what he says, Tim. I, I reckon he stopped shaving about a week ago. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> Look at our new our net. We've we've covered all the questions, Ella, and um, uh, now we're on to um, the news items. And look, I, I put a post uh, in the news items uh, tonight. I, I've spotted a Matt Cutts tell. You know what I mean by tell? That like when when you're playing poker, um, you can uh, when people are you know if they scratch their nose. Uh, and they they win once. The next time they scratch their nose, they've probably got the got the cards in their hand as well. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So I was I was watching Twig, which is a uh, um, a uh, show put together by Leo Laporte um, uh, from Twit TV, um, and Twig is uh, this week in Google. It was recorded today, and. 
who should be on it but Matt Cutts. Anyway, um, in in the state in the um, in there, um, and it's at 39.17 in this clip. And I invite you to uh, go to um, the SEO News Community and uh, click that 39.17 uh, link. Um, and it will play, and it'll only take about four seconds or five seconds. But tell me if if this is a tell, um, because when he makes that when he makes that statement, as soon as he makes it, he forces his mouth together so close that his his lips begin to bulge out, uh, or his face begins to bulge out underneath his lips, and he's clearly uncom uncomfortable uh, um, with making this statement. Uh, I'll give you time to have a listen to it. Everybody had a chance to hear it? See the facial expression? Uh, you're funny. <laughs> Pardon? You're funny. <laughs> so he purses his lips together, essentially, after he makes the comment. Yes. I suspect um, you, you might be reading more into that. <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm, I'm overly sensitive to these things. Oh well, and so um, it looks like I'm on the outer again. No, never mind. Okay, <laughs> let's move on to the next. Did anyone else have a comment before we move on? Right, next item. Um, it is uh, um, how does Google treat widgets for big people and widgets for little people? This was. Um, um, Al Garou's uh, new widget, which I've placed on dumbseoquestions.com. Um, and um, there, was some, um, there was some question about uh, whether the link should be followed or no followed, um, which led to Dan asking the question on uh, John Mueller's uh, Office Hours Hangouts. And... Um, um, he got the answer back that probably should be no follow. I think that was right. I hope I'm not misquoting John. Um, but um, it, 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 it seemed to me, um, I mean, I, I know um, um, that uh, we've spoken before about TripAdvisor and uh, where you're not allowed to make links to them no follow. I'm getting feedback from someone too, I think. Um, but um, yeah, uh, um, any comments on, on what transpired there? So I'm, I'm a little unsure what's happened here. So Dan's put his widget out and um, people are saying that he, should, he doesn't want to no-follow the links originally, but then he's maybe 
is allowing people to no follow them, delink it, um, like remove yeah, it, no follow it yeah, if they want, he, or leave it. Linked. He put it. Yeah, he put it out and he said, "Look, this is totally editable, so you can add, you can leave it as it is, or you can add no follow. The choice is yours." Um, and then some people said, "Well, you know, yeah, you know, probably best not." Um, and then of course it was like, "Well." There's no actual point because I don't want to rank for Algaroo. You know, Algaroo ranks for Algaroo. So it's not like I want, you know, it's, it's there's no actual point uh, in that sense. Um, and then they put it on, there was Umdana, and it was still, yeah, well, because it's a widget, it needs to be no followed. But it just brings us back to the other flying question there is, well, we know of some sites that their widgets are do follow and you know they seem to be doing all right but uh, obviously mere mortals need to know follow this hmm. but I, actually um, I don't think well I, I don't know if Dan sorry yeah no I think Dan did actually have a private chat later with but I think in the original webmaster uh, uh, JM skirted the point. It was like, well, no, if, no. but, yeah. But no, then I think yeah, he had it. And then, no, and it was just that Christian uh, from Brazil um, miss, missed it. And, and, oh, um, oh, oh, right. And, and um, Dan found it and um, put a link to it in that same thread. So it was a resounding, it should be no followed. Well, no, I'm not sure anything is ever resounding, but <laughs> I actually watched. I actually watched it, um, and um, I think the the, the um, opinion was that it for, for it, it should be no follow. But it's just weird. Do you have a link to that? That would be interesting to see. Yeah, I'll find it for you, Micah. Yeah, because usually isn't that like the whole like. Uh, <clears throat> Um, I, I remember uh, complaints always with say the stuff around like Travelocity and their widgets. Um, it's not like Google doesn't have FeedBurner <coughs> and their widget. Um, so it would be always interesting to to see if they've been trying to uh, go a little further with what you should be doing with those. But you see, the thing is, on 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 the um, you know Algaroo widget page where you can where you can download it, you know it clearly states that you know Dan said, and this is in theory should be within Google's guidelines that it's editorial because he clearly states this is do follow and you know it doesn't break blah 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 you can you can add no follow if you want to, yeah. uh, but so that in theory is within. You know, it's editorially placed because they have said on the widget page when you when you you know when you copy the widget, it says it there, um, and you have the option. It doesn't break if you turn it to no follow or anything like that. So you have the option, but um, Dan now has actually made them no follow after this conversation, so which I think is wrong. You know. Mm. Because the the whole point is, he has pointed out that this here's here it is. You can you can edit it if you'd like to. You can make you can leave it as it is or make it no follow, because this is your editorial choice, and that is what it's supposed to be about. Yeah, I don't think he should have to no follow them simply because. So, again, you know, Google's opinion on this sort of changes over time, but. Originally, when the whole widget thing was happening and Google kind of started making comments about widgets, they said that um, uh, poor quality widgets are a problem. If you're putting out widgets that are like hotel counters or page view counters and embedding widgets into like links into them from um, you know all over the internet, that's going to be a problem for you essentially. If you're putting out a good quality widget that's genuinely got a purpose um, that brings value, then you Essentially, they said you should be allowed to have those links as followed. And yeah, now and he's, it's not, uh, he's got a widget that people want to install, like Mozcast might have a widget, I don't know. Um, 
and they, they're choosing, editorially choosing to carry his widget. And it's reasonable that the widget includes a link, not because the link makes Algaroo rank, because it already ranks, right? But it makes <laughs> yeah. sense that he carries a link because custom or visitors that click on it might want to get more information, and the link gives them the more information. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, because it actually lands it onto Algaroo and it shows you the whole thing, yeah. you know, the whole month shot. And it's not even optimized in, in that sense. It's not sort of any – it's Algaroo to Algaroo. It's, it's not like the best SEO tool. Do you, do you know what I mean? There's, there's, this is just a pure, helpful, legitimate, great widget. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just anyway. It is frustrating, I think, that you know, anyone should have to do that when they've genuinely got a good widget. Anyway, it is what it is, I guess. Um, the next news item, Jim's just stepped away from the computer, so the next news item that was in was um, about a new app for Google My Business um, that they've just released. Um, it includes notifications for new reviews, which is pretty awesome for business owners, um, click-to-call phone tracking, uh, heat maps for driving directions. Uh, you can respond to reviews in the mobile app now. It's in Android, but the iOS one is coming. Um, and it's got uh, its AdWords Express mobile app as well, I think. Um, I've kind of lost touch a little with the local stuff now that I'm not working for a hotel chain. I don't have to do local local stuff anymore, but um, Google places my business, all of the various incarnations and names that it's gone by over the years. I think it's been a um, overwhelmingly underloved product from Google as far as business owners, particularly SEOs and agencies that need to do a lot of local management. Um, it's just been under underloved a lot, in my opinion. One of the poorest products that Google has. Um, frustratingly because it's so important for local businesses. So I think this is a really fantastic addition from Google to bring some real value to small businesses. Yeah, it's coming on really nicely now. Uh, you know, the insights, uh, connecting it all into analytics now, um, your engagement, all your tracking, um, now with the heat maps uh, and where people are, you know, if there's a problem, I think it's really coming on leaps and bounds now. Mm. There's still big problems, though, with, like, um, you know, still merging across from the old place accounts to the local because that's not even complete. And there's still big problems with ghost pages just appearing, you know, ghost businesses appearing, which are verified and nobody can, <laughs> you know, nobody can claim these pages because they've just, like, they ghost pages, but they've been verified, so nobody can. Yeah, so there's still there's still bugs, but they are spend clearly spending more time um, in this and 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 making things work nicely. It's cool. Yeah, I can't wait. I think it's really great. Any anything to help? It's funny because you know. For a small business, um, Google Places is like a lifeblood, and I think you know most small businesses probably don't appreciate that anywhere well enough about how important it is that they've got a good local listing, um, and that they're really fighting for their visibility within the search results because it's so prominent in the search results with the seven pack, um, you know. And if you're on mobile and there's a huge number of searches that are mobile, it's even more dominant. You know, so if you're not in the seven pack, you're you're not in the hunt. No. I know. You know, the thing is, it's it's unbelievable. If if you take, you know, you, you look at some of some some of the stats of these um, uh, local business pages over 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 like a, a twelve month period. And I've got a little coffee shop down the road who doesn't even have a website. Okay, but I got them onto you know the 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 local. And within the last 12 months, they've had 47,000 views, um, you know, coming to and where people are actually, obviously the heat map's only been around for the last 30 days, so that's starting to build up nicely. Uh, but the phone number, so, you know, it, and it's also, it, it's it's invaluable, really, really is invaluable for 
um, for businesses. Yeah, I agree. Mind you, there's a little bug with their reviews, and I think it's to do with this new notification thing. But because what seems to have happened is in the uh, in your um, tabs in your local business, it's normally about posts, photos, and then reviews. Well, for some reason, that review tab is just completely dropping out, uh, and all the reviews are showing very weirdly at the bottom of the about page at the minute. <laughs> so. I think it's something to do with the integration of the reviews and the app. And I mean, in this last seven days, they just people are all over the place going, "Where's my reviews gone?" I'm like, "Well, no, they're at the bottom of your about page at the minute. Just wait for them to iron out the bugs. <laughs> Calm down. It's not like all 50 of your reviews were just taken away from you. <laughs> take, a, take a breath. Yeah, take a yeah, they are. Yeah, it's like they're still there. Where, where? Scroll down to the about page. Oh yeah. <sighs> oh yes. Um, the next one on the news item was from Tony McCreef. He said, um, apparently the Google custom search engine fell down this week. Um, and that every website that was using a Google custom search engine, well, I shouldn't say every, uh, might have been broken in some parts of the world but not in others. But certainly when Tony was testing it, he said that um, they were pro providing no results to their users. It doesn't happen often, but it does highlight one of the interesting problems, I suppose, of like a dependency on third parties for things like this. The... Um, I suppose the downside is, and upside, uh, it's very easy to set up a Google custom search engine. And by default, they return better results in general than most proprietary search engines that you would buy for a lot of money and install into a site. So it's a hard sell, I think, to convince a business to, um, or an average business, to go and go to the effort of installing you know, a proprietary one, not, not from Google when their one is so good and pretty easy to set up. But do you guys use custom search engines or anything? I used to, um, and, um, but um, I'm, 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 I'm thinking of, 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 of doing something else now. Um, and, and the reason was that for some reason or other their billing went crazy. For years, we used it for about three or four years, and uh, we used to pay um, about a um, hundred dollars per site for I think it was twenty-five thousand queries. But um, it might have been something that I did wrong. Like we might have put um, one of our four hundred four pages to pr pr provide a, um, a search on landing or something like that. Um, but anyway. Uh, um, suddenly all of our sites started using their 25,000 queries very quickly um, and at $100 a time I was spending it three or four times a year for each site it's just become too expensive so while we still have it on some sites you know, my, my plan is to replace it with a crawler that um, will crawl all of the sites and, and uh, but, but have a central um, you use, use XML to bring it from there um, back back to the site that we're putting search on. Does um, Google, sorry, questions of Google, does Microsoft have a custom search engine you can use? Yeah, they do. That's what I'm going to use. Ah, that's good. It's not, it's not, it's not they actually used to have a nice little search. image tool too, but uh, that one got uh, hit in the way. <clears throat> Nobody? Nobody. What's that, Micah? Oh, that was just me making a joke of Google on their image widget that uh, getting images got uh, angry about. <clears throat> All right, yeah. Okay, um, will we move on from the custom search engine? Yep. Another one from Tony McCreef. Um, and I titled this "It's a Sad, Sad Day." It, it, um, it just when we thought that Microsoft were getting smart, um, 
they um, um, pink slipped um, a whole uh, heap of people, but uh, not the least of whom uh, was um, the face uh, of, of Bing and, and Bing Webmaster Tools, uh, Dwayne Forrester. Um, I don't understand it. Um, I really don't understand Microsoft's thinking. Um, why would they do that? I think it's not targeted at them. They're obviously restructuring the business um, for some reason. Probably a cost thing. Did, did, they, did they announce how many staff they laid off as part of that? I think it was like 10K worth, right? How many? 10,000, I think. Wow. That was a decent chunk, I think. Well, it's probably a cost thing. Ultimately, I mean, big businesses lay out big chunks of staff from time to time when they need to make pretty substantial changes. You know, like the telecom company here in Australia have laid off thousands of workers in a hit several times over the years, like over the course of, you know, 15 or 20 years. They've made massive redundancies. Um, Qantas, the Australian airline, they've done similar things where they've laid off huge chunks of their staff. I'm sure if you were to look at a lot of those other big businesses like, um, you know, Hewlett Packard or Ericsson, Nokia, um, they've probably done it all as well at, from time to time. It's not great, but, you know, I think um, the blog post that Dwayne put out was fantastic. You know, he's obviously really uh, grateful for the time he spent at Microsoft and the people he got to work with and the great stuff he got to work on. And, um, you know, I'm confident he's a really talented bloke, so, you know, he'll land on his feet with another amazing job sometime very shortly, I'm sure. Maybe he'll end up at Google. <laughs> That's what you said the other day, Alistair. Um, do you have some inside knowledge, do you? Well, the inside knowledge is if, if, if we take your conspiracy of, uh, of Matt leaving... There's a potentially open position for Dwayne right there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't think that they would replace Matt uh, with Dwayne like that, in, in a sense that um, you know he's has had no tenure, I suppose, at Google. It would, assuming that there were other uh, web spam team or trends analysts like John Mueller or um, Gary or um, any of those kind of guys that might take the mantle, I suppose. Um, it would seem that one of those would be more likely a candidate than Dwayne as an immediate successor if he was to join Google. But, you know, if that's what his interest was in, then maybe in the future that could happen if he was ever to join. Yeah, I mean it, it. It's. I mean, the thing is that it, it's. Um, I mean, you have Bing, which is is a search engine which doesn't penalise anybody. I, mean, I, I could. I. 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 I wouldn't uh, mind uh, um, speaking on their behalf, um, but I wouldn't speak on behalf of Google because I. I, I don't believe that they're. Uh, me, their, their, their method of penalising sites is ethical, you know. Um, like in that clip we were talking, you know, I, I tried to point out, um, you know, Matt Cutts said uh, that um, Google recognises that what they do harms webmasters and, 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 and they keep that in mind when they do it. Yeah, sure they keep it in mind, that they keep a percentage of collateral damage and they have an acceptable percentage of, of innocent websites who might be caught up in their uh, latest algorithm. And uh, that, to me, is just morally uh, indefensible. So, yeah, look, um, um, you couldn't pay me uh, enough money to, to apologise for Google. Wouldn't do it. I do wonder about um, about this, with because we've chatted about this before in the past, Jim, um, on and off when this has come up, what, what would you propose um, Google do in this instance? 
Well, you know, you well, you you know, you can't you you're constantly advocating for the little guy effectively and saying that it's morally reprehensible and it's but you can't believe that Google would do X, Y, or Z in some of these kind of scenarios like that, right? And I wonder what what would you have Google do to to appease your um, sensibilities to this? <laughs> what would you suggest that they do? And the reason I ask it's that it's very very simple. Uh, um, you go on. Well, the reason I ask is that for since Google's existed or search engines have existed, there's always been a, an order, right? Always. Someone's at position one and someone's not, or position ten and someone's not, which means people. Some people are getting traffic and money, good, bad, or indifferent. Who cares why? Some people are winning, and others are losing on the sheer fact that there's only ten links on the first page, ten on the next, so on and so on, and people are not prepared in most instances to drive down into pages three and four and five and eight to try and find something unless they really, really, really need it. So with that in mind, that has existed since ever. It wasn't invented by Google. That's the first thing. The second yeah. thing is that every search engine that has ever existed has made changes to their algorithm over the time, at which point the nature of the business says that since there's a list of businesses on page one and two and three, inherently changing the algorithm changes who's on page one, two, and three, which means someone wins and someone loses every single time an algorithm changes. Now, those two things haven't changed since the dawn of time. As, as long as search engines have existed, that basic process has existed with it. So my question is, I suppose, given that Google need to keep iterating their algorithm, and it's something they've been doing since ever, alongside every other search engine, what would you have them do so was that to not unduly penalise someone when they make an algorithm change, when inherently every single change they release, one website wins and another website loses? Sure. Uh, no, I, I look, I, I think there's a, um, a, a very simple answer, um, and th that is to drop upper limit thresholds. Um, where um, you know, if if a site has so many links pointing towards it, and uh, that this percentage, the, the the number of links varies from site to site, but um, at a certain percentage um, increase, um, it, it it tips the threshold, and and instead of the, the new links helping the site, they penalise it, um, or, or with links that are uh, interpreted as spammy. Um, instead of um, um, penalising the site for having these links to the site, they could simply ignore them. I mean, it's it's not something. I mean, Baidu, Yandex, um, everybody being no, nobody else but Google penalises websites. Um, so here's here's the question, do, and Jim, for you: How would you handle a situation like? Um, what happened with JC Penney's. So this is where, in theory, <coughs> um, at least the SEO agency, well, I'm not sure if they actually said they did, but in any case, we'll just say for now, the SEO agency bought a ton of spam links right before the holidays, shot them up, and then removed them after the holidays. So how do you, you know, how do you handle something, you know, when obviously it seems they tactically have, they don't have the technical ability to see these spammy links fast enough to even discount them. Look, um, now you're getting in, into territory that requires some um, thought and intelligence, and it's really not my field. <laughs> um, but the thing is that. Um, uh, Bing and and, and uh, Yandex and, and Baidu, they, they they command a market. They they they, they have loyal uh, users who, who must trust their results, and they do it without these upper limit th thresholds. They they simply don't have a penalty structure. Um, 
Adam? Bing did slap down all the Black Friday sites. <clears throat> I, I don't know um, that one. Um, but yeah, on. um, look, I, um, I, 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 look I, 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 I'm personally uh, part of it because, um, you know, over a, a period from 2007 until now, not so much now. Um, in fact, uh, it's it's pretty well stopped. But I'm sure if we were ever to pop our head up again, um, then um, I'm sure um, we'd get more links put to us. But it it shouldn't be possible for somebody else um, to take an action against anybody's site, like and and and. And, and actually have a, a physical effect on 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 the, on uh, the competitor's side. It shouldn't be possible. It's only possible with Google. So that, that's that's that particular example, right, of negative SEO. And and I take your point that it's unfair that someone should be able to um, knock down someone else's website through malicious action. That's unfair. I take your point on that and. Google should be doing everything they can, and I'm sure they are, to make it hard. But if people are really, really intent on nailing someone for spammy behaviour, then they're just going to keep going until they nail them, irrespective of the changes to the algorithm. If you keep abusing it, at some point, you're going to fall over the edge. My point, I suppose, was less specific around the negative SEO stuff and just in general. So the example there is, Dave, your, your example is there's weaknesses in their algorithm that some way or another someone wins and someone loses in that scenario. Granted, in this instance, they're losing because of malicious action, but, the, but my underlying fact is they're losing, right? That happens a thousand times a year when Google makes changes to their algorithms. Someone loses, right? So they roll out Panda. Boom, thousands of websites, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of websites lose. Hundreds of thousands of websites win. They roll out Panda 1.1, boom. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of more websites shuffle around in the search results. Some go up, some go down, some win, some lose. Um, why, why not cry foul over that? That's far more why not? Well, than for instance, targeting the specific point of negative SEO, when every day of the week, literally every day of the week, Google are releasing um, two or more algorithm changes every single day into production, which has material okay. impact on the search results where someone wins and someone loses. It's no different than sure. someone losing because of negative SEO or someone losing because Google makes an algorithm change. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is different. I, I maintain that it is different. Um, in that, um, the, the changes due to Panda and so on. This is a level playing field. This this is where what they're applying is fair to all people, and and that they they wouldn't have um, a calculation of collateral damage um, for uh, an algorithm like Panda. No one. I don't know. Um, I'm not pre present at the meetings, um, but uh, I, I doubt that they'd have um, um, a, a collateral damage percentage calculation um, for their assessment of, of, of the introduction of, of a, an update to Panda. Um, but look, all, all that's fine. I, I, I don't mind winners and losers, and. Um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to say I, I've won very well uh, over the years, and uh, um, right now, um, um, if, if, if this was a race, uh, I, I'm back behind the starting grid. Um, but um, look, I, I don't have a problem with, with um, you know natural fl fluctuation because it's a level playing field. It's ethically sound, um, but. The only thing I have a problem with is their use of upper limit thresholds to al allow an innocent party to be damaged by a malicious operator. It's ethically wrong. 
Yeah, I think okay. that's the distinguishing thing, isn't it? It's the intent. In the sense that if someone threw his or her incompetence and burns his or her own site and the site goes down, you know, there's no, in a sense, third party involved. But if someone with a malicious intent can um, affect someone else's business, then I think that's that's the problem. It's that I think is hugely problematic. If it is indeed, if it indeed is possible, in vast majority of cases, I doubt that would be easily accomplished, but I think theoretically and probably in practice it does happen. Well, that's the Google line, of course, that it, it, it's very hard. Um, I, look, um, um, it, it's been done to us for so many times and, and uh, um, uh, with such regularity that I, I reckon I know the whole rule book. And, and um, you know, um, if, if we were to um, get a site to rank, uh, I mean, I, obviously we, we couldn't do, demonstrate this with um, a site um, that, that is owned by someone, but, you know, one day for fun what we should do is, is get a site to rank. I, I think we all have skills in that area. We might be able to uh, um, get lucky. Um, get a site to rank and then take it down. Um, because I, I, I know that we can just, just as quickly uh, uh, take it down as, as, as we get it up. Yeah, sure. So I'm not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I'm really sad about Dwayne um, uh, not um, being a part of uh, Bing anymore. Um, really, Microsoft, what were you thinking? Um, shall we jump to the next? Sure. Although the next is kind of the... <laughs> Google doesn't want to ignore spamming from <laughs> <laughs> Alistair Lattimore. Ah. <laughs> and he responds to the great Nick paradox. <laughs> Dan Petrovic, oh my goodness. Um, I, I forgot this one was here. Um, this article begins with an overview about link penalties and that Google is fighting spam in the form of links for quite some time. The main question that Alistair tries to answer is, why aren't Google in ignoring manipulative, simply ignoring manipulative links? And um, he um, uh, says two potential answers are possible, namely um, that Google can't identify net unnatural links with enough accuracy. And uh, this cannot be the case because if they are prepared to uh, penalise a website by Google Penguin, it seems reasonable to assume that they have the confidence in identifying unnatural links and taking action on them, and two, or two, Google doesn't want to. Um, look, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's a, a case of uh, doesn't want to. I think it's more of a case that um, they slipped up and um, went down the, the, the wrong ethical path. And um, now that they have so much uh, of these uh, upper limit uh, thresholds baked into their algorithm that it would cost them a fortune to pull them down. That's what I think. But, uh, Alice, I have to apologise. I haven't read your article. Um, I, I've re really been working uh, on, on this um, software um, since last week. And... Um, I'm looking forward to um, getting this to some sort of workable um, um, level um, and uh, being able to catch up on things like uh, um, reading. But um, I'd love to hear uh, you talk about it, and I promise I'll read it tomorrow. <laughs> so Dan's article was cool, right? I thought it was a good article because he's talking about um, the changing behavior of webmasters 
and SEOs over time as a result of influence from Google in the way that they, um, the shifting sands, I suppose, of their opinions about what's good, bad, or indifferent with respect to links, how you should link um, across time, essentially, and that their opinions are having a very real impact on how people link around the web, um, particularly for SEOs or search marketers because, you know, it's our job, effectively, to find the holes or weaknesses in their algorithms and push the limits without pushing too hard. So, you know, SEOs know, for instance, that um, uh, keyword-rich anchor text works, but that's produced people that pursue that. So then Google releases Penguin that targets things like over-optimized anchor text. And you can see how now as a result of that, people are going out and building what Dan refers to as designer link profiles where, you know, it's like, oh no, I'll have this percentage of brand queries, this percent of rubbish kind of text, you know, a smattering of um, commercial anchor text and bada bing, bada boom, I get to rank potentially and uh, don't get penalized. Fantastic. Um, my article, I suppose, was about Dan's comment where he said um, that they need to um, change their stance on this and that instead of going out and um, making webmasters uh, change their linking behavior, that they simply need to learn to ignore the things that they think are manipulative manipulative, but they're not doing that. Instead, they're forcing webmasters and SEOs and everyone else to try to conform to their algorithm, essentially. And I, my article was essentially about why might Google simply not just ignore the manipulative links? Um, their um, spam fighting capabilities in general um, appear to have the chops. You know, they can detect unnatural links from one site to another. Um, they can automatically uh, remove links from link graphs with things like rel no follow. They can manually devalue links through manual actions. They've got all of these different capabilities to reduce or remove the effect of links, for instance, on websites and identify poor quality links with algorithms like Penguin. Why not just simply ignore them? It seems like they've got the chops. And I'd said basically that maybe they can't identify them with enough accuracy. Maybe they require higher volumes of abusive um, behavior or like quite overt um, uh, link profiles that are really quite manipulative before they're prepared to algorithmically take action. That seems reasonable. They obviously need to identify patterns in link graphs to be able to penalize stuff, which is fair enough. Um, or maybe they don't want to. Um, and my article was about sort of they don't want to because ultimately um, they've got rules. They've had rules forever about what makes a good quality website, technical guidelines, quality guidelines, you know, who should link to what, etc. Um, and that they use these webmaster guidelines to uh, you know, loosely police the internet about what they're prepared to put in their index and what they're not. And that they're happy to rank good quality websites and make people very wealthy that make great websites. They've got no issue with that. But they're not prepared to have people at the top of the search results getting very wealthy when they don't deserve to be there in their, you know, in their opinion. Their search results are meant to put forward the best quality websites for a user's query. Um, and if you editorially earn your way to that position, then they're more than happy to make you work very wealthy off that. But they don't want to be manipulated. And they, I think they kind of take offense to the fact that when you do, when they do get manipulated, it makes them look bad. So my article was essentially about why aren't they just simply ignoring them? And I said, well, they don't like being manipulated, period. Um, it seems reasonable that in due course, as maybe computing resources become cheaper or their algorithms might get better, maybe they will begin to um, do this 
maybe on a more uh, specific level without having to have such big, uh, easily identifiable patterns. But I think at the moment there's a very good reason why they're not doing it. Penalising a website through a penalty like Penguin is a very real deterrent for bad linking, essentially. And the, the example I gave in my article was back in 2005 when Google announced rel nofollow. They initially rolled that out as a motivation, or their motivation was to try and curb comment spam, essentially. All websites should rel nofollow links in comments that they don't trust, essentially. And it will remove the reward for spammers, and spammers will go away, and they will do something else instead. Um, but we know that's not the case. And email spam, um, comment spam on websites, it's soaring, highest levels ever. So rel nofollow hasn't had the effect. So taking away the prize for spamming didn't work. So I see no reason why taking away the prize for um, spamming links um, to get rankings would work either. It hasn't worked in the past nearly 10 years. Why would Google think that it would work tomorrow? It's not going to work. Spammers will keep spamming because it's easy, it's fast, it's cheap, um, and they make money out of it because they can do it en masse. So Google need a way to deter spammers from spamming. Their deterrent is, if you spam and we catch you, we're going to put your website in the bin, and it's going to be really goddamn hard for you to dig it out. The only people that are going to be prepared to dig a website out from being penalized by Penguin are real businesses who may or may not have deliberately done it, they may have had negative SEO, doesn't matter why, but the only people that are going to be prepared to dig a website out from being penalized by Penguin are genuine businesses that really need their website back. Spammers are simply not going to do it. They'll be forced to churn and burn. And Google will be prepared to churn and burn their next website, and their next website, and their next website. And their algorithms are going to get faster and faster at um, detecting this stuff. Like, it, at some point, Penguin isn't going to be once every 12 months. It'll be once every six months, once every three months, once every month. You know, it'll then it will soon enough. It'll be just part of the process of Google as they crawl the web. Websites are just going to get dumped on their asses because they've fallen over the algorithm again. Um, but they're they're not going to be prepared to just ignore them and let people fragrantly abuse the system and continue to spam without repercussions. They, they need the repercussion. That's my opinion. I, I just can't see that they're going to just go, you know what? Yeah, you, you have at it. You spam the internet. We don't care. Go your hardest. I just I can't see that happening. Fair enough. Yep. By the way, uh, Sash Meyer is currently in Cody, Wyoming in the United States, according to uh, Skype. Is that Cody, Wyoming? What's most random? Cody, Wyoming, yeah, that's what it says, C-O-D-Y. Hmm. That's not a hard place to go. Any comments on um, Alice's article? Well, the only thing I had was just an addition of Google's good, but not fast enough. That was the only third thing I added when I saw when I read through Alistair's article. So certainly, in, 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 sorry, uh, Michael, but uh, yeah. go ahead. No, I mean that was that was the only thing. Like, Alistair kind of already covered it in his, his talk about this, but it was just. <clears throat> just saying that uh, I thought there was definitely at least a, a third option if they can do it, but they just don't have the technical feasibility to do it fast enough versus those who are manipulating. So hmm. Certainly in areas like um, uh, payday loans, like areas that are heavily spammed, like payday loans and uh, pharma, hack, uh, ph pharma uh, you know, selling of um, prescription drugs, um, they, they seem to be um, unable to beat them. 
Yeah. Well, not, not yet anyway. But I, I think that's another example of what Michael was saying about their algorithms being fast enough. At the moment, quite clearly one of the problems that Penguin's got is that um, it's not being processed quickly. You know, like it took them 12 months to update the metrics for Penguin in the last iteration, which is absolutely ridiculous. You know, and I think Google have, um, you know, admitted that basically, that uh, it was too long. Um, you know, but let's just, if you fast forward still, let's say that Google's in a position where Penguin is run every month alongside Panda, for instance. Um, and in general, it becomes harder and harder for a payday loans website to rank and then get, it'll get torn down within 30 days or less than 30 days, essentially. Um, what's a spammer going to do there? Do, you do, do they just keep doing it because they get two weeks worth of revenue out of spamming? Um, or why would Google want to not penalise that person indefinitely for breaking the rules? I suppose that, that's ultimately what it comes down to in my head. Even, even if they had the computing resources to run Penguin uh, kind of every month, which they've said that they don't because it's so resource intensive, which is why they were doing it as an offline task like they originally did for Panda. Um, even if they had the resources that they could run it every 30 days or, or integrate it into the algorithm on a rolling process every day, for instance, um, would they ever want to not penalise a spammer? That, that's ultimately what it gets down to. And I just think the answer is no. I don't know. Time yeah. will tell. Yeah, well, I, I, I think I, I, I wish them, you know, the very best of luck um, with that. I, I, I hope, um, you know, that, that they um, beat those guys, um, really do. Especially those farmer hackers that um, break into people's sites to, to um, place their filthy links. Um, yeah, but um, as I, I think Tim uh, did, did a post on this. I think he's on the phone at the moment. But I think Tim did a post on this um, with the payday loans guys that and. Uh, that they appear to have that scenario that you were talking about, Alistair, um, just br bringing up new sites um, constantly. They've always got a, some on the way up. Yeah. And th there's that um, firm in Brisbane that um, does that too. Um, Which firm? Yeah. Oh, look, I can't think of, think of their name. It's um, something like Rainbow Group or something like that. Um, no, they, they have um, a huge operation. Um, I've, I've spoken of them before. Um, they've got a car park full of shiny German cars. They've got more, more Mercedes Benz uh, than Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they, 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 they just suck the life out of a domain and, and, and then they drop it on the aftermarket. And some unsuspecting buyer buys the site and. Um, they will never ever uh, do any good with that site, no matter what they do. Um, anyway, let, let's move on from this one. Um, and thank you for that um, kind, your kind words, uh, Alice. All right. Uh, this was on um, link memory. Non-existent links um, still give, give value for some time. Is that an indication that um, um, all of these processes aren't synchronised, uh, that, that they run asynchronously? I don't think so. I, I, would, I think there's merit in this logic. There's a lot of merit in it, actually, I think. That if you think about the web in general, right, that websites get linked to and through no fault of a website owner's doing, they will just naturally lose links over time. People rebuild their websites, um, and when they get all of the copy rewritten on their websites, 
you know, the links that they link to change. And um, you could lose a really high authority link to your website that was when you first got it, um, that link really helped to fuel your search engine rankings. And then they rebuild their website and you lose the link. Um, it makes sense in that scenario that Google would allow a link to essentially continue to fuel that website for some potentially substantial period of time. It smooths out their rankings, I suppose, so that they're, they're not fluctuating so much in the search results every day as links come and go, which is good for Google and probably good for users, and it gives a, a certain amount of um, predictability to the search results about what stuff is ranking. So that's kind of nice. It does make sense. I mean, that website, for instance, it was prepared to link to um, website B for some period of time. Could have been years. Um, at which point they were very happy about that link. So it makes sense that they should, that Google should continue to think that that there's a good relationship between that website and their, the website they were linking to but are no longer linking to, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think it, it makes complete sense. Rand Fishkin did some stuff on this um, a while ago. He called it um, link, echo, link echoes or um, ghost links or something like that. Um, and he found the same thing. And he's repeated this test now several times um, on several domains. And every time he's done it, it's worked, I think he said, in the post. Where they, you know, add the links, uh, rank the site, take the links down, site continues to rank. And in his tests so far, they've continued to rank, I think, uh, six months after they've taken the links down, they're still ranking. The thing that I think that's interesting about this is um, how long does a link need to be up in, like for Google to consistently crawl it before the link will begin to echo when it's taken down? Because as a spammy tactic, for instance, you could, if, if some of these processes aren't linked together and you could theoretically add links today, let Google crawl them and have them present for two weeks, long enough for this echo effect to kick in, for instance, your rankings go up, and then you take the links down. Now, if the links are spammy and they would ordinarily get you penalised, but the links go down again, when things like Penguin rerun, those links no longer exist. So you're not going to get penalised, but potentially that link could still be echoing or, you know, uh, equity to your site helping you rank. So if you if this process did work, you know you could go out and find a way to um, add and remove links across a large number of websites fast, um, and potentially reduce the risk of you getting penalised, but still get to reap the rewards of the links if some of these processes aren't connected. Um, and one of the things I posted on Rand's blog was that I think he should rerun with this test is um, he should rerun some tests and add rel nofollows to the, to the links instead of taking the link down um, and removing it entirely. What happens if he explicitly nofollows that link? Does that, when Google recalls that link, does that inherently drop that link equity? Like it's a hard stop. It doesn't continue to echo after that. Google recrawls the no follow and boom, the equity stops flowing and the rankings fall. Mostly just to understand the impact, I suppose, or of real no follow um, on some of these things. Like, is it a real stop action for Google? Um, it's an interesting experiment. I think it would be worthwhile running. We should run more experiments. Um um, they're fun. <laughs> yeah. Very well. Will we move on from this one? Uh, yep. I've got a bail, so I'll, I'll step out now. Okay, buddy. Uh, th thanks, Alistair. Thanks very much for your contribution. Appreciate it. That's okay. See you, guys. Good night.
I've lost my mouse. Are you on holidays at the moment, uh, Micah? Nope. <coughs> okay. So I am going to be heading off now. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it must be a, a difference in the time zone. Yeah, oh, we did have uh, daylight savings, so that kind of moves some stuff around. Right, okay. All right, well, we've covered all of our questions. Okay, we, we still have people watching us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for um, your participation. Um, it's your interest in what we do that makes uh, this job uh, worthwhile. Um, we'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do it uh, again. Um, I'm going to put a link uh, in the SEO questions community on, on Google+, Plus, uh, which will um, bring you straight into this Hangout. We'll be off the air, um, but uh, we'd love to have a chat with you. Okay, um, I'll uh, end this broadcast and we'll see you next week.